Today we'll talk about the permeability, uh, especially the single phase permeability, which is similar to the uh, high level conductivity. Uh, so, okay. let's start this one. So, permeability is the ability of the fluid to flow through the cross media. And the permeability is a property of cross medium. So this is not depending on the fluid property. So if you have a, a rock core or maybe a material which is porous, then that should have a one permeability. And it doesn't change with it, whether you measure it with gas, whether you measure it with oil, whether you measure it with water. Okay? So permeability is a property of the porous media. Right? And what about the hydraulic conductivity? We learned the hydraulic conductivity from soil mechanics. Right? That's the um, permeability for water. Right? Hydro means the water. Right? So hydraulic conductivity assumes that the fluid flowing through and flu fluid passing through is water. So that's the difference between the hydraulic conductivity and the water, or the absolute permeability. So the permeability is actually, uh, you cannot measure it directly. You estimate it from a, a certain law, a certain uh, governing law that we assume, which is Darcy's law. And Darcy's law is, I think, we, this is very familiar, familiar equation. And from, mechanics, what is the Darcy's law? Q equals Kia, right? K I A. And here the K is the hydraulic conductivity, and I is the pressure gradient, right? or the hydraulic gradient in this case. Right? And this has been changed to delta P over L. Right? Instead of the total head difference, we are using the pressure difference. And then in that case, we can just use this equation. Right? Here, the difference is that you have a pressure term and that you have mu, which is the dynamic viscosity. So, uh, what is the uh, dynamic viscosity of water? Mm -hmm. One. Millipascal second, right? So, one millipascal second is, this is the, uh, this cost of water, right? Also, it's referred to as centipoise, yeah? the one centipoise yeah? at 20 degrees Celsius. Yeah? So, if, what will be the uh, permeability unit, the unit of the permeability? Let's plot the numbers here, uh, the, uh, the unit. Mm. Okay, so if we uh, change the equation with respect to K. Q times L times U over delta P times A, right? So then uh, flow rate is cubic meter per second. And length, let's use just SI unit, so meter. And mu is what? Pascal per Pascal times second, and delta P, so that's a pressure difference, so we use Pascal, or Newton per square meter, and meter square. So what's remaining? So Pascal can be canceled out, second, the time will be canceled out. So this is meter to the four, the power of Four, so here the meter square, so you have meter square, right? Does it make sense? So the length square is the unit for the permeability. So people use micrometer square or centimeter square or meter square, right? Mm -hmm. And in the rock mechanics and the, in the reservoir engineering, so they use Darcy. This is the, the name of the unit. And this is the uh, uh, 
So one Darcy is defined as the permeability that allows the fluid of one centipoise viscosity to flow at one centimeter per second for a pressure drop of one centimeter per centimeter. Also one ATM, so atmospheric pressure per centimeter. Right? So this is the uh, definition for the Darcy. So it assumes the viscosity of the one centipoise, so it assumes water. And uh, flow velocity one centimeter per second and the pressure gradient one ATM per centimeter. So here, this equation, if you plug these numbers here, one cent centipoise and uh, one centimeter per length, and uh, delta P for one ATM and A per one centimeter square, right, you need the area, then K will be calculated as Darcy. Right? And before, we have this equation, and we can plug any number like liter, liter or the uh, uh, millipascal, or whatever the unit they use. Then you, we can correlate the, uh, this Darcy to the liter square, right? And that is converted to approximately 10 to the negative 12 liter square. So it's just very easy. You can just, you know, plug the number. So the reason that we have a 0.987 here instead of one is that one ATM is, it's not exactly 100 kilopascal, right? One ATM is about, how much was it? One, one or three kilopascal, something like that, right? One bar is 100 kilopascal, but one ATM is around one or three, if I'm correct. Okay. So that's why you, uh, this is not exactly one. Uh, average permeabilities in reservoir are commonly in the range of 5 milli Darcy to 500 milli Darcy. So 500 milli Darcy is a very large number. So um, when you have fine sand, the permeability of the fine sand is about 5 Darcy. Okay. And sandstone very porous sandstone is about 0.5 Darcy. So 5, 0.5 Darcy is the same with 100 milli Darcy, right? So 100, 500 milli Darcy is a very highly porous, uh, porous rock. And also we can convert it to the hydraulic conductivity. So if we assume here the fluid water, then we can pr uh, use the uh, water viscosity, right? Then this equation can be converted to this, the Darcy flow that we know that we learn from the soil mechanics. Right? So then hydraulic conductivity is related to the absolute permeability with this equation. So here the K, small K is the hydraulic conductivity and the large K is absolute permeability. And so large K times viscosity, oh no, it's a unit weight of water <coughs> divided by the viscosity gives you the hydraulic conductivity. So hydraulic conductivity was the unit of hydraulic conductivity. Unit. Hydraulic conductivity, when we use hydraulic conductivity, Dani got to use Anyone? Meter per second, right? So it's just the same with the velocity, huh? so meter per second. So this has the unit for, uh, unit of Length per time. Okay. So one Darcy is about ten to the minus four liter per second. That's for reference. Yeah? So you should be able to convert the absolute permeability to the hydraulic conductivity and to the Darcy too. And flow rate depends on the rate uh, ratio of the permeability to viscosity. So 
when you have a sandstone, which have maybe a 0.1 Darcy, and you apply the pressure gradient 180 m per centimeter, so the same pressure gradient, and when you flow the water, flow rate will be some value, and when you flow the, the gas, then your flow rate will be much higher than the, the flow rate for the water. So that's why we are, uh, normalize the flow, flow rate with the, the viscosity. And a good reservoir with the commercial rate has the uh, permeability of few millidarcy for the gas reservoir, and oil reservoir is a tens of millidarcy. Uh, we can, so we're going to talk about the calculation of the permeability. And you can measure the permeability with different setup. Actually, you can measure it from the field experiment or the field pilot or the quick flow test. And you can take the core and bring it to the lab and then you do, you do the uh, core permeability test. And basic is that, um, I think we can do it with the example here. So this is the, uh, common example to determine the permeability. So in the laboratory setup, you apply the pressure difference of 3.4 atm for this uh, plug, uh, the rock core. And uh, we use the uh, fluid with the viscosity of 2.5 centipoids. So that's heavier than the water. And the diameter is a 4 centimeter, flow rate is 0.35 cubic centimeter per second, so then you can calculate the uh, permeability. Right? So uh, why don't you calculate it for, maybe I'll give you two minutes. You can either use this equation here, then you can get the value for Darcy, right? Or you can use this equation. It's basically the same equation, but you can convert the units easily. Hmm. So what's the area? Let's say calculate the area first. Huh? So we have a diameter of the core, which is four centimeter, D. So then area will be R is two centimeter, pi R square, so and this is how much is it? Twelve point Mm -hmm. Five six per centimeter, right? So Q, let's use the uh, this, this unit, then point three five cubic centimeter per second times two point five centipoid times L is ten centimeter, right? Over delta P is how much is it? 3.4 ATM times area is, then I think, and this will give you the, uh, the value for Darcy. Right? So then, how much is it? Is it 0.05? No, what do you have? 0.205, hmm? 0.4, so yeah. Or uh, instead of just using, if this is confusing, then you can use the uh, viscosity 2.5 millipascal second, which is 2.5 times 10 to the negative 3 pascal per second, right? And the, for, the, for the viscosity. 
And for the delta P, instead of ATM, 3.4 times 1, 3 kilopascal. Right? Then you get the value for what? You get the, the permeability in the unit of meter square. Right? So, zoom in, folks. 여기까지는 쉽죠? 그냥 날시스로 이용해가지고 푸는 거를 지금 하는 겁니다. 오케이. Okay. Uh, and it should be noted that Darcy's law was derived for unconsolidated sand pack. So actually Darcy was a French engineer, a sewer engineer, and uh, he derived this equation from the sand pack. So he saturated the, uh, the sand pack and uh, he uh, increased the hydraulic head, then measured the, uh, uh, the flow rate. So that was the, the, the equation was from. So the Darcy's law is only valid when there is no chemical reaction between the fluid and rock. So if the if uh, fluid is absorbed to the rock mineral surface and then they react together, then you you don't you cannot apply this equation. And uh, only uh, when only one fluid phase compensates through the pores, and when the uniform type of the pore system is used. In the dual process system where the fracture and box occur, the Darcy flow may not be valid. So in this case, you can think of maybe like this kind of a box system, right? Then flow velocity changes abruptly, right? When you apply the uh, the, the flow constant flow rate, so there will be some uh, turbulent created at some corner, then uh, the Darcy flow doesn't apply. You will be, there will be some other effect. Uh, so in that case, especially when we use the gas to measure the permeability instead of the water or the viscous fluid, then there are gas slippage effect, which is called the Klinkenberg effect, and also the inertia effect, Holzheimer effect. We're going to talk about it later. Um, what if we use the uh, compressible fluid, like for example the gas, to measure the permeability? So in the case of water, the pressure difference, pressure difference is very small. And depending on the pressure, it doesn't change the, uh, the density. But in case of gas, if there's a pressure change, then the density at the inner side and the density at the outer side will be different. So if the mass is going through the, the, from the mass conservation, so going in mass, total mass should be the same idea going out to mass. So Q1 times P1 is from the Boyle's law, I think. P over T times P1, P1, V, V2, P2 over T. Over the time interval T, the volume of gas at pressure 1, so V1 times P1, should be the same with the V2 times P2 over the time interval T for the same time interval. So here the V1, the one is at the inlet part and two is the in the outlet part axis. So then in the Darcy's flow here, we should use the uh, average flow velocity because the uh, flow rate at the inlet and the outlet is different. So then Q2, if you, I think it's, it's okay, uh, uh, you can, if you know the flow rate at the exit, so what they do in general is that you have a gas chamber here, and 
Generally, this is the atmospheric pressure. pressure. Then, you inject the, uh, the gas, and you measure the flow rate, and you measure the, uh, the pressure at the inlet side. Then, you can calculate the uh, average flow rate and apply this equation. And, or, if you measure only the Q2, and the P1 and P2 is known, so then you can use this equation to calculate the flow rate. So I think you can easily derive this equation from here to here if you use this one. And to A V is oh, no, sorry, sorry. P A V is Q one plus two over so using these two equations, if you plug it here, and you can derive this equation. So uh, let's solve the example. Uh, the volume of gas exiting a core at atmospheric pressure V2 is 800 cubic centimeter. And time required to collect the V2 is 500 seconds. So we measure the uh, uh, volume collection for 500 seconds, and the P1 is 0.5 atm, and P2 is just 1 atm, so it's just the atmospheric pressure. And core diameter is 2.5 centimeter, core length is 4 centimeter, gas viscosity is 0.02 centipoles. So then, you can calculate the K from this equation or this equation. Uh, let's use this one. So then, we should calculate the Q1 and Q2 and QAV, right? Then Q1, Q2, Q2, QAV, QAV, right? And what is Q2? How much is the Q2? Q, the flow rate at the exit is the volume of gas over the time. So A, 100 cubic centimeter over 500 seconds, so 1.6 cubic centimeter per second, right? So then PAV is P1 plus P2 over 2. So then 1.5, 1 over 2, 1.25 ATM. Right? So then QAV is Mm-hmm. Q2, Q2 over PAV, so average pressure. So then 1 ATM, 1.6 over 1.25 ATM. Then you have some number, right? What is the average flow rate? If you have calculator, what is two? One point six over one point two five. Okay, one point two eight second. And then we can plug this one to here, and we know the uh, core length and the diameter, so we can calculate the area. The length is here, and the gas viscosity is 0.02 centipoles here, and the delta P, P2 minus P1 will be 0.5 atm, right? So then it's very straightforward. You can calculate the permeability. Or uh, you can use this second equation. And here you don't have to calculate the Q2. Uh, Q, 
AV, average flow rate, because it's all converted to Q2 here. So then we know the Q2 and P1, P2, P2 is known, and everything is known, so we can, you can calculate the K. So either uh, whether you use the first equation or second equation, you should be able, uh, able to calculate the same value, right? random with the same value. So K is the answer is how much is it? 41 millidarsi, 42 millidarsi. Jim, okay. Question. Okay, so it's been straightforward. Huh? Uh, so then, when you use the uh, gas to measure the permeability, you should apply the proper calibration because the, uh, it has a gas slippage effect. So at low pressure, gas molecules are very low viscosity and low density. So, for, hmm. Let's think about the uh, pipe. This is one pipe. And flow is flowing through the, this pipe. And the velocity profile is generally like this. Right? That's what we've learned from the fluid mechanics. It's for the Newtonian fluid. And at the wall, you don't have the velocity. The velocity at the wall is zero. Right? But if this one is fluid, it's not viscous. If this fluid is very gaseous, then you have some velocity. Okay. And it's called the gas slippage effect. And because of this, some velocity at the wall, at the boundary, Darcy's flow doesn't apply. Okay. It's called the gas slippage effect. So, and it becomes larger, this effect becomes significant when the gas pressure is low. But as the pressure is increased, gases get more compressed, right? And the density increases, and the viscosity increases, so that you have, you are uh, approaching to the normal viscous fluid. So at pressure more than 1,000 psi, the gas molecules are close okay. here. The result will be, when you apply the starship flow without uh, considering this Klinkenberg effect, then permeability will be higher right? because of the gas is slipping through easily compared to just water. Right? But the, as the pressure increases more than 1,000 psi, the gas molecules are closer together and experience a viscous friction drag at the side of the pole so that the, as pressure increases, you have decreasing pressure, a de decreasing permeability. So, so it's been correlated by this equation. And KAPP is the apparent permeability, and KL is the Klinkenberg permeability, which is the same with the absolute permeability, presumably. And you can see that the, uh, this measured permeability is inversely proportional to the pressure. So as the pressure increases, KAPP will decrease. As the pressure decreases, KAPP increases, right? Oh, the slip factor is always the positive value. This is positive value. So then, uh, I think in the next slide, we have a graph showing the Klinkenberg effect. So, here you can see that the, as the pressure, as you go to this side, pressure is what? 
decreasing, right? It's a low pressure. And as you go this side, it's a increase, high pressure. And from here to here, as you increase the pressure, the gas pressure, you can see that the permeability is decreasing linearly. This is 1 over P. No? From this, uh, the intersection with the x-axis gives you the KL, which is close to the absolute permeability that we want to measure. So how do we get this value? We need to repeat the measurement of the gas permeability at different gas pressure, so four or five different gas inlet pressure and outlet pressure. Then calculate the mean gas pressure, and then mean gas pressure will be P1 plus P2 over 2, so outlet and the inlet, and you average it. Then plot the KAPP, the apparent permeability, which is measured from the Darcy's law, against the 1 over PM. Then apparent permeability at the x-axis intersection will be KL. So that's very straightforward. Huh? So this is the calibration procedure to consider this Klinkenberg effect. So Klinkenberg effect is independent on the type of the gas, as all gases have the same property in when the pressure is infinite. Huh? as the pressure approaches to the infinite. So uh, you can see the for the helium, you have different alpha. So this alpha is different. And for the air, you have a different alpha. But at the uh, with x, uh, intersection with the x-axis, you have it converges to a, a certain one of the same value, one value. So KL should be corrected for all gas. And it doesn't matter whether you use the helium or hydrogen or the air or the nitrogen when you measure the, nitri uh, the, the permeability. Good. And yes. And this assumes that the uh, the gas is now absorbed to the rock matrix. So there is no interaction between the rock mineral and the gas. Huh? And the inertia effect. Inertia effect is that when you have high gas flow rate, the gas accelerates, accelerates through pore throat and decelerates in pore body sufficiently for the gas inertia to cause turbulence. So this is the case that we talked about. Huh? So here, when the gas coming out of the pore, because the, now the area becomes very large, so the flow rate is, uh, the flow velocity decreased because the area is large, right? so that it decelerates. And when it enters the pore throat, so the, now the area is very small, so that the velocity will be high. And this velocity changes for a certain length of the core, uh, it causes the turbulence. It's a Furtheimer effect. So that you have a Darcy zone, which is a laminar flow, which is uh, where the pressure gradient is proportional to the velocity, or the velocity is proportional to the pressure gradient. When the pressure gradient is uh, higher than a certain value, certain number, then you have a full time effect because the pressure gradient is too high and then you have a high flow rate. So when you measure the permeability using Darcy's law, you should find the proper Darcy's zone for your rock core. And this Darcy zone will be different if you use a certain type of the gas or different type of fluid. Human. Okay. Question or comment? No? Uh, and reservoir, the quality of the reservoir can be categorized with respect to permeability. 
Generally, the absolute permeability of the reservoir ranges from 0.1 milli darcy to 1 darcy. And when the permeability is less than 1 milli darcy, it's called a tight reservoir, which is very poor quality. And in this case, there should be uh, fractures right, to produce the, uh, the oil and gas economically. And when the permeability is larger than 200 milli darcy, then it's called a very good quality. So then what controls the permeability? We're going to talk about the uh, influencing factor on the permeability one by one. Mm. Shape and size of the sand grain. If the rock is composed of large and flat grains, uniformly arranged with the longest dimension horizontal, and the horizontal permeability will be very high. And the vertical permeability will be medium to large. So this is the case. You have a, a grain, a flat grain, and that's deposited in horizontally. So the uh, preferential orientation of the particle arrangement is horizontal. Actually, that's very natural. When you think about a uh, platy particle, like this kind of a platy particle or angular particle deposited in this, uh, during the sedimentation, it's not easy to sediment this direction, right? And then compact it, right? It's more natural to be sediment horizontally, right? So in most reservoir, in most formation, uh, sediment, uh, sedimentation rock, uh, the horizontal permeability is larger than the vertical permeability. And if the large and the round grain, so in this case, you have a uh, round grain, and then the horizontal permeability and the vertical permeability is similar to each other, like this figure. Here, the flat grain, the horizontal is a 2 darcy and 2,000 milli darcy, and the vertical permeability is 800 milli darcy. This should be just milli darcy. So then, this difference between the vertical and the horizontal permeability causes the anisotropy. Impermeability. Also, it causes the, uh, the anisotropy in stress, eh? stress and the mechanical behavior. So there is a direction or a directivity in permeability. And also, the lamination is very similar to the uh, uh, platy particle sedimentation. So platy minerals such as muscovite, and shale laminations act as a barrier to the vertical permeability. In this case, KH over KV ratio is ranging 1.5 to 3, and it may exceed uh, 10. So you have a, let's say that you have a clay, clay particle, and clay particle will be settled down like this. And uh, this direction, KH, is much larger than this direction, K, KV, right? So here, when you inject the water, the flow of the water vertically, the flow should flow or experience more tortuous uh, flow path. Right? And sometimes the vertical permeability is higher than the horizontal permeability due to fractures, vertical jointing, and the vertical solution channels. Right? And when you have a cementation in the rock, then the, depending on the cementation strength or the uh, quantity, you will have a decrease in permeability, right? So let's say that, imagine that you have a just clean sand pack, you have a certain value, and time goes by, it gets cemented, and you have an inclusion could be carbonate or some diagenetic material. Then porosity decreases naturally. So then pore size also gets reduced. 
So the permeability will decrease. So cementation, degree of the cementation will affect the permeability. And fracturing in the solution, it's going to increase the permeability, right? When you have a fracture by this stress, then it gives you a certain preferential fluid channel. So the permeability will increase. And then in also the case of the dissolution, in carbonate, the solution of the minerals by percolating surface and subsurface acidic water as they pass along the primary pores, fissures and fractures and bedding plane increase the permeability of the reservoir because they dissolve and the, will decrease the uh, permeability, uh, the porosity. So eventually it's going to also decrease the permeability or increase the permeability. And stress condition also affects as they do for the porosity. So when you increase the overburden stress, it decreases the porosity. So and the stress can collapse and close some pore throat because of the compaction. So then it affects the permeability reduction. So when you compare the uh, the uh, relative reduction for a certain amount of the overburden pressure. The porosity reduction is about maybe 20% or 30% at maximum. But in the case of the permeability, the, porosity, the permeability reduction can be larger than 50%. Okay. So it, uh, the overburden pressure has a more significant effect on the permeability than the porosity. Hmm? Comment? OK, uh, so then we're going to talk about the permeability and porosity relationship, then Kojeni and Kalman equation. Uh, so large porosity will have high permeability, right? Because it has bigger pore. And low porosity, low permeability. Right? That's a very logical thinking, but I think we remember this equation, uh, this plot. And this region is what? A limestone. Is it? Oh, no, sorry. Oh, this is porosity and this is quantity. This is limestone carbonate. And this is sandstone. This is fractured rock, and this is what base is meant, right? You remember this figure, right, from the last class, right? So it shows that the high porosity but low permeability is also possible in the case of the clay and shale, and low porosity with the high permeability may be also true for the fractured rock. Right? So it doesn't always uh, correlate well when you have very special or the different rock formation. But in general, uh, sandstone case, the porosity and permeability relation is semi-logarithmic. So here, porosity increases linearly. And then the permeability increases logarithmically, right? exponentially. So you have a relation here, the exponential relation between the K and the porosity. porosity yeah. Power law. And this table, this uh, figure shows the influence of grain size on the relationship between permeability and porosity. So porosity is in the x-axis and permeability is in the y-axis. Also, it's in the logarithmic scale. And what do we see? The left side points are the coarse and very coarse grain. And as you go toward the right side, it gets finer. Right? So here, maybe sand. Right? And coarse and medium grain and fine grain, and silty rock, and the clay stone, right? 
So it has a pseudo linear relation between the permeability and the porosity, but for a certain same porosity, let's say that let's just cut it this section. Clay, for the same porosity, clay stone has the lowest permeability, and the sandstone has the largest porosity. Oh, no, permeability, sorry, the greatest permeability. So as grain size increases, the permeability increases. Eh? So the, that grain makes in, making the uh, rock formation. Why? This Why is this happening? So this is simple cubic packing, and simple cubic packing. So the simple cubic packing should have the same porosity, right? Also about 43%, 46%, right? Which one will have the higher permeability? The left one or the right one? Of course, the uh, if this A and B, A will have the higher permeability, right? Even though porosity is the same. 40%. And the reason is that you have a more surface between water and solid grain that cause the friction drag. So specific surface area, the surface area between the uh, fluid and the solid so they reduce the uh, permeability. Right? Increase in specific surface area, then you have decrease in permeability. So that's why for the same porosity, you have lower permeability in clay. Uh, so another chart showing the typical permeability porosity relationship for various rock types. You have a limestone, ulitic limestone, different limestone, turkey, and uh, this is sand. Uh, for your reference. Mm -hmm. So limestone is very interesting. So you have a very small porosity, 10% only. Still, you have a high permeability, right? Must be very uh, fractured. Yeah? Okay, so uh, then um, people try to establish and develop the model, permeability model, from the porosity and the space surface area and the total velocity. Right? So uh, from here, we're going to derive the Kojeni equation. And also the Kojeni Kalman equation. Kojeni Kalman equation, have you heard of Kojeni Kalman KC model, right? Kojeni developed the first model, and then later they introduced the torchosity and the, uh, convert the um, spatial surface area term more in general, then it becomes the Kojeni Kalman equation. So uh, it starts from the tube. A bundle of capillary tube. Right? And each capillary tube, let's say that this is the n number of capillary tube. Right? And the diameter, uh, the radius is r, and the length is l. Then 
from the Poisson equation, the flow rate is defined as this equation. So delta P over L, this is the, uh, the pressure gradient and viscosity. And here R is the radius of the capillary tube. N is the number of capillary tubes. Right? And also, we know the Darcy's flow. Q is K times A over mu delta P over L, right? Then this Q and so we can, using this equation, we can calculate the K as a function of the radius and the uh, area. Here, the, the permeability is the uh, R to the 4, a function of the R to the 4 over the, the total area, cross-sectional area. The so cross-sectional area is if the capillary tube is in, in this direction, and then total area is all of this. Huh? So that's the cross sectional area. So the by definition porosity will be AC, so the uh, n times pi r square over AC. So this is the, uh, the area that the, the fluid is passing through, and the AC is the total cross sectional area. And then uh, K becomes porosity times r squared over a, over a. And to eliminate this r, so r is the uh, specific radius of the capillary tube, right? And we can generalize this radius with the internal surface area. Right? So internal surface area per unit pore volume, SVP, is defined as the surface area over pore volume, so 2 pi r L over pi r squared times L, and specific surface area per unit pore volume is 2 over r. So then you can replace the r with the S dp, then the equation becomes this one. So 1 over 2 times S squared times positive. So it shows that permeability increases with porosity, and permeability decreases with the square of the surface surface area, right? Very intuitive equation. Okay, can we move on? Let's move on to the next. Then here the LS PV is converted to the SBGR. So SBGR is the space surface area over post material uh, within the pore space per unit of grain volume. So before it's a unit of pore volume and now it's converted to the unit of grain volume. So for a bundle of capillary tube, total area exposed AT is equivalent to the internal surface area AS and the grain volume BGR is equal to AC times L times 1 minus velocity, so that you have this relationship. And then I think that you can derive this one. And SBGR is plus as the SPP times cross T minus 1 minus cross T. So then, if you replace the, uh, this, this one in the previous equation, you end up with this final equation. So here, the difference is that you define different as the species of this area. Before, it was a species of this area per unit pore volume. And now this is the specific surface area for unit grain volume for the solid part. Eh? So now uh, it looks familiar to we have. Then, okay. 
example three, I'll give you uh, maybe three minutes to calculate. A core sample, uniform sense formation has a permeability of this, and porosity of this, estimate the average pore float radius of the core. So if you use these three equations, you can estimate the pore float radius and special surface area for these two parameters. So what do we have? Mani? Mani? Oh, okay. Hmm? Okay, let's move on. And then, uh, so, so far we consider this straight tube, right? A bundle of capillary tube which is straight, but in the rock core or this post media, this flow path is very curvy, right? It's a tortuous. So the average flow uh, path length that a fluid particle must travel is actually greater than the length of the core sample. So here, actual length is LA. If actual length is L sub A, core length is L. Then total T coefficient tau is defined as the LA over L squared. So that's the definition of the total T. So as so tortuosity, increase in tortuosity or the large tortuosity means that what? You have a very curvy flow path. Huh? And when the flow path is one, then it means that it's straight. LA is the same with the L, right? The core length. Huh? So keep in mind that. And then if we use this tortuosity coefficient, the Poisley equation becomes this one with the tau Then the permeability equations like this one. So I think now we have a tau here and tau here and also tau here. And this is makes sense. This this makes sense because the as tortuosity increases, then the fluid particles should travel longer distance, so the permeability will decrease, right? So increase in tortuosity, decrease to reduce the permeability, right? So it should be in the uh, denominator, the numerator. Sorry. And then uh, here the factor two is generalized with the Porsche factor KPS, then it becomes as is tau and S D B R square right? So instead of two, people just uh, use the uh, some empirical parameters to fit the data. Right? And when we think about the S B G R, this is the space surface area per unit volume of grain, and that's very difficult to measure. So we can convert it to the unit volume of coarse medium, that's SS, then it becomes the final coordinate Kalman equation. Tau S squared and But basically, it's the same equation. Okay, let's move on. Uh, there's an example four, but uh, I think uh, we don't have much time, so you can solve it after the class. And the relationship between porosity and permeability and texture I think uh, we talked about this in the porosity. When we talked about the porosity, the grain shape affects the permeability. So the, when you have a uh, angularity, increase in angularity or, and the decrease in um, sparsity, then you have a uh, increase in porosity, right? So as the, the particle gets more angular, 
fast increase, so the permeability also increases. Huh? So that's basically the same. And the uh, porosity is independent of grain size for uniformly packed graded sand. And so permeability declines with the decreasing grain size because the pore diameter decreases and the species surface area increases. So for the same porosity of 10%, sandstone will have the higher permeability than the shale because of what? Well, because of the species surface area. And grain sorting, uh, here they are talking about the, whether the uh, rock, is, rock grains are well graded or poorly graded. In the, uh, the geology, they use the sorting. So we here, we use the grading, right, uh, in geotech. So here the sorting is opposite meaning of the grading. So well sorted means that it's poorly graded. It's uh, well organized, it's uh, uniformly. Well sorted means it's a uniformly graded, most likely. And the poorly sorted means it's a well graded. Okay? It's an opposite meaning. So then when you look at this chart, poorly sorted, which is well graded, so that you have a broad distribution of the grains, and then permeability is what? lower than the case that you have a well graded. Huh? So porosity increases with the improved sorting. And permeability also decreases as the sorting decreases. It's the same relation. The mechanism is what? So you have a well-graded or poorly sorted rock, then small particle can fit in the air large pores, so it decreases the permeability, right? Which is maybe confusing because of the uh, different uh, terminology, but the sorting is opposite to the grading. Uh, grain packing, we talked about this in the past. So cubic packing and the rhombohedral packing, two extreme cases for the, the porosity. And depositional process basically shows that the um, the position of process determines the grain size and the sorting so that it reflects the uh, characteristics of the rock. So it's just the summary that we talked about. And grain orientation is also the same. So vertical, so orientation of the grain may have little effect on porosity, but major effect on permeability, especially the directionality or directivity of the permeability. And sand grain also contains flaky grains of mica and clay, shell fragments. So then sediments are stratified, so layering can cause the different permeability, and the clay lamina also. So Vertical permeability is generally considerably lower than the horizontal permeability because of this grain orientation and the lamination. Uh, the same and the duplication. In most sand, the grains generally show a preferential alignment with, within the horizontal plane. Move on. And in this formation, in, in the basin scale, sedimentological control over the vertical and lateral variation of the porosity and permeability in the petroleum reservoir can be found. So in the channel, grain size decreases as you go downward. In the barrier bar, the grain size decreases as you go, oh, no, sorry. This is green size increase. And this is green size increase. As you go over them, yeah? so that the permeability will decrease, uh, increase as you go downward. And here, permeability increases as you go over them. Yeah? So channels often have upward finding. Right 
here channel as you go here it gets more fine and in barrier bar you have an upward coarsening in profile and then of faster permeability so here upward increasing permeability then again upward fining in the channel upward decreasing permeability and in barrier bar and the delta mouse bar fan upward coarsening grain size results in upward increasing permeability. So that's because of the depositional process is different for different area. And okay, that's it, right? So suggestive readings are a course notes of the chapter six and the uh, the petrophysics chapter three.